This Week at NASA. 4, 3, 2, unité, top, allumage Vulcan. The European Space Agency has successfully launched its third automated transfer vehicle. The cargo ferry named Eduardo Amaldi for the Italian physicist and spaceflight pioneer was sent on its way to the International Space Station atop an Ariane 5 rocket from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. The ATV brings essential supplies and propellant to the ISS, as well as the ability to reboost the station's altitude. ATV Eduardo Amaldi follows the two highly successful supply missions carried out by ATV Jules Verne in March 2008 and ATV Johannes Kepler in February of last year. Thanks uh, to everyone who's here for the press conference and everybody out there in TV land. Members of the International Space Station's Expedition 32 crew recently discussed their upcoming mission aboard the orbiting laboratory with the media. When we get there will be ATV, probably, the European uh, sp uh, spacecraft. Shortly thereafter, we arrive, will be HTV, Japanese spacecraft. Hopefully thereafter will be either SpaceX or Orbital, another American spacecraft. We'll do a, probably be doing a Russian EVA, hopefully doing a U.S. EVA. So it is a really international um, time when we'll be up there. It'll be pretty exciting. NASA astronaut Sonny Williams, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Malenchenko, and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Aki Hoshide continue to train ahead of their scheduled July 15th launch aboard a Soyuz spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Williams, Malenchenko, and Hoshide will replace Expedition 31 crew members, NASA astronaut Don Pettit, Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko, and European Space Agency astronaut Andre Kuipers. They're scheduled to return to Earth on July 1st. Remaining on the station to round out the Expedition 32 crew will be NASA astronaut Joe Acaba and cosmonauts Gennady Padalka and Sergei Revin, who are scheduled to launch to the station in mid-May. Open. Engineers at the Marshall Space Flight Center test fired a scaled down solid rocket booster for NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS. The 20 second firing tested new insulation materials on the 109 inch long, 24 inch diameter motor. Testing of this low cost replica will help engineers develop and evaluate full scale SLS solid rocket motor tests. The SLS is the new heavy lift launch vehicle that will expand human presence beyond low Earth orbit and enable new missions of exploration across the solar system. Marshall is leading the design and development of the SLS on behalf of the agency. Another season of science activity is underway for NASA's Operation Ice Bridge. From mid-March through mid-May, Wallops Flight Facility researchers aboard a modified P-3 aircraft will study changes in the polar ice as they fly over the Arctic. Since NASA's Ice, Cloud, and Land Elevation Satellite, or ICESAT, stopped its annual measurements of ice elevation in 2009, Operation Ice Bridge has been collecting the data until a new satellite, ICESAT-2, is launched in 2016. Operation Ice Bridge also conducts an annual campaign over the Antarctic in the fall. The highly anticipated Angry Birds Space is out. Produced by Rovio in cooperation with NASA, the game is not only charming and challenging, but also informing players worldwide about the physics of microgravity. In the course of play, gamers are treated to a glimpse of the NASA meatball atop the International Space Station. It was a field trip like no other. Thousands of middle school students packed the Charlotte Convention Center in North Carolina recently for NASA's Education Day. The event aimed to inspire and motivate students to think about their future. Area step teams and a university band and cheerleaders wowed the students before motivational speaker Calvin Mackey took the stage. The problem in America is that too many children are quitting. Mackey implored the students to begin thinking of how science, technology, engineering, math, and maybe NASA might play a role in their future. 
And we're here today to let you know that in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, 80% of the jobs in the future can be in those areas. Students also heard from NASCAR driver Ryan Gifford, who shared his story of perseverance. He encouraged students to take their education seriously. Just really hope you guys stick with whatever y'all decide to do. Uh, stick with it and keep your head there and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. NASA continued its reach into the Charlotte area by having a presence at the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association, or CIAA, basketball tournament, and by hosting a series of STEM workshops for area teachers. Teachers spent the week at Cochrane Collegiate Academy learning fun and exciting ways to incorporate NASA educational resources into their curriculums. Lots of hands-on engaging activities, things that we can do and we can bring right back to our classrooms and explore with our kids right away to get them excited about STEM activities. Whether through hoops, workshops, or special events, people of all ages in Charlotte, North Carolina got to know NASA a little bit better. What do you think about the new light? NASA's Cassini mission to Saturn, managed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, has received the top group honor from the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, the prestigious Trophy for Current Achievement. The Cassini-Huygens mission, a collaboration of NASA and the European and Italian space agencies, was launched in 1997. Since it began its orbit of Saturn in 2004, Cassini has made many significant discoveries. Among them, plumes of water ice and organic particles sprained from Saturn's icy moon Enceladus, signs of seasonal change in the planet's northern hemisphere, two new Saturnian rings, and four new moons orbiting the planet. The trophies for current and lifetime achievement are the National Air and Space Museum's most prestigious awards in recognition of advances in aerospace science and technology. In honor of Women's History Month 2012, a celebration of empowerment and education, NASA recognizes Lakeisha Flowers of the Kennedy Space Center and other women for their contributions to the cause of space exploration. My name is Lakeisha Flowers and I'm a human resources specialist here. And as a human resources specialist, I, have, I share the responsibility of implementing an effective strategy for our workforce. And that plays a part in bringing the right people to the right positions to make sure that we can accomplish the work that makes us successful in our mission. What I really love about my job is the people. We have incredibly talented and passionate people and just to be a part of that and seeing how we all come together and are successful in completing our missions continuously is remarkable and it's inspiring. So the people. Because we're in such a dynamic environment, I think it's so important that we have a diverse workforce because with diversity comes a variety of ideas, backgrounds, perspectives, and problem solving. And when you have a variety of mindsets approaching an issue, then you're more productive in reaching the right solution and mitigating any risk. NASA has such a dynamic mission and we as a human resources office want to ensure that we're providing and supporting the center and getting that right mix of skill set at the right time and do as much as we can to cultivate a workforce that's going to be effective and able to respond to, to any of the demands that may come with a changing mission. The past four decades has seen the city of Las Vegas grow enormously. Just how much? is illustrated in this time-lapse imagery released by the Landsat program to celebrate the 28th anniversary of the launch of the Landsat 5 satellite. The Landsat collected data is shown as a false color time-lapse. The large red areas are actually green space, mostly golf courses and city parks. The images become a lot sharper around 1984 when new instrument designs improve the ability to resolve smaller parcels of land. Although the earliest images predate Landsat 5, that satellite has been the workhorse of the program, providing vast amounts of data about the land surfaces of our planet. With this vehicle, the flight to the moon will be accomplished. March 23rd marks the 100th anniversary of the birth of space pioneer Werner von Braun, chief architect of the Saturn V moon rocket and the first director of the Marshall Space Flight Center. Thanks to all of you. Speaking at a Space Transportation Association reception on Capitol Hill to celebrate the milestone, NASA Administrator Charles Bolton cited the importance of Von Braun to America's space program. 
We owe Von Braun a great debt of gratitude for helping usher us into the space age. And I'm really happy to be here tonight as we chart our course toward even greater milestones in the future, thanks in large part to his pioneering work. NASA historian Bill Barry says that in the 1950s, prior to even NASA's establishment, Von Braun played a major role in shaping public opinion about sending humans into space. Von Braun was really important in terms of catalyzing in the public imagination in the United States, the expectation that in fact, the opportunity to fly in space was not far away and was achievable within our lifetime. We built that rocket, we put it together in six years. As a recent German university graduate in the mid 60s, Jesko von Putkammer was recruited by von Braun to come to Huntsville and join the US effort to go to the moon. Today, when you talk to engineers, they look at you and they're saying, how the heck did you do that? Von Putkammer, who remains at NASA to this day, says it was the strong presence of Von Braun and his will to meet the challenge set forth for the nation by President Kennedy that made it possible. It was just the spirit, the enthusiasm, and the leadership of, of someone who made you totally convinced that he knew what he was talking about and NASA would not be where we are without him. We would not have had this um, preeminence in space, this prestige, which we have today with the International Space Station, if we wouldn't have been von Braun and his firm belief that a huge rocket could be built to bring people to the moon and back safely within uh, a decade. EVA is progressing beautifully. I believe they're setting up the flag now. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, or to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.